Thanks. Well, I can tell you, uh, unofficial estimates for the moment do say that, that over 300,000 people are now in the streets of Athens. Not only is downtown Athens around Constitution Square completely, you know, uh, streams of people have taken over waving their flags, uh, but also around the side streets of Sindama Square, what you see are families, uh, elderly people, um, young people as well, but mainly people who have come here not only out of nationalism, uh, but mainly because they feel this is, you know, just too much. It's the final straw, they say. Uh, they've endured so much, uh, they've told me. And this is, to many, the first protest they've actually uh, joined in all the years of the crisis because they feel it goes straight to the core of their pride, uh, of who they are, of their Greekness. Uh, and they are just aghast at this government who still won't listen on such important matters. We put up with so much, they tell me, but this one is just too much. It's the final straw on that broke the camel's back. So it sounds like this is mixed in with a lot of, of other issues going on in Greece as well. But the name of the rally is Macedonia is Greece. Can you give us a little bit more background on the conflict between these two countries? Yes, it is. And the, I mean, just to add to the earlier one, it is just one protest that could unite everyone, whether from the private sector, whether from the public sector, whether uh, anarchists or, well, the anarchists aren't really here, but left wing, right wing, it's just a uniting uh, and rallying cause. Now, this dispute goes back to the 90s, uh, when the breakup of uh, Yugoslavia, where the uh, neighboring country decided to uh, declare its independence and call it of Macedonia. Uh, the Greeks back then reacted to it. They came to some sort of uh, provisional agreement where they would uh, define and call themselves as the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia, and they would enter into all uh, local and international agreements as such. But through the years, they started, the Greeks claim, um, introducing, you know, uh, parts of the Greek territory and claimed them as their own into school books, uh, etc. They would also uh, try to enter into international agreements under the name of Macedonia. Uh, the Greeks strongly opposed that, and they have uh, strongly reacted to it. Culmination of that was back in 2008 at the NATO summit, where Greece vetoed uh, the neighboring country's uh, uh, entry uh, into the North Atlantic Alliance. Uh, and since uh, former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia has been unable, if you like, to join the European Union or to join uh, NATO alliance. So they've been trying, uh, if you like, to come to some sort of compromise. These years have been, if you like, we've seen a culmination, we've seen a flurry of activity between diplomats shuttling from Greece uh, and uh, the neighboring country, between Athens and Skopje. Uh, and uh, now what the Tsipras, the Greek prime minister, has been doing is really trying to resolve this issue. But with all this crowd around, it will be a really difficult one and a tough nut to crack, especially convincing Greeks on why they should resolve resolve this name uh, dispute. Now, as far as Tsipras, he says, over 140 countries have recognized the neighboring country as Macedonia, so it's time the Greeks do something about it, perhaps with a qualifier like Northern uh, Macedonia or Upper Macedonia. But people behind me are saying no.